Hi Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera So today I will be sharing with you the answering technique for chemistry paper 2 So please refer to the slide that I give you in the link below Okay For SPM format KSSM you will have 3 paper Paper 1, paper 2 and paper 3 So in paper 2 you will have 3 sections Section A, Section B and Section C. So, we will focus on paper 2 today. Okay, let's see what items are there in paper 2. So, you have Section A where you have the structured question. Okay, in question uh, Section A, you have 8 structured question. Total mark for this section is 60 marks. You have to answer all questions. And the question will be based on diagram, data, chart, graph, or any information given in the question. For section B, it is a limited response where you have two questions, the essay question, and you have to answer only one question out of two. Okay, the total mark for this question is 20 marks. And for section C, it is an open response question. You only have one question and you have to answer the question. Okay, 20 marks. Okay, this is a type of construct and examples. Okay, let's say you have a construct of remembering. So the question will be related to the definition, writing formula and names without stimulus. Okay, if you have question on understanding, you are expected to give reason, comparison, explanation and observation. If the construct is about applying, so you have to write a chemical formula, writing the half equation, the ionic equation, okay, the calculation, drawing diagrams and also mark direction or problem solving. Okay, if the question is related to analyze question, okay, you have to analyze two situations given or diagrams and make connection between the situation or uh, the diagrams. Okay, uh, if the question is related to evaluation or evaluate, so you have to review a specific criteria and make an assessments on the situation given. And the last one, create. Okay, it's a question related to creating a tool based on a situation suggested and modifying experiment equipment or design uh, based on the question. Okay, how to write answer in section A? Okay, firstly, okay, you have to write a short and precise answer. Step 2, your answer may consist of several sentences, short phrases, word, number or equation. Step 3, check the mark allocation for the question. And step 4, check the number of answer line because it will guide you on how many sentences that you need to write. Okay, example of question in section A. Okay, this is the information given in the question. So, they will ask you the question related to the information given. Let's say in this question, they ask you in which group of the periodic table chlorine located so you have to refer to the chlorine proton number and also nucleon number okay so the answer is group 17 and then write the electron arrangement of potassium atom so they are referring to potassium atom and the electron arrangement so refer to the standard representation of potassium and you will cut the proton number so, the electron arrangement for potassium is 2.8.8.1. So, it's related to the information given in the question. Another type of question that usually asks in structured question is definition. So, if you are given a question related to definition, the question will have one mark and you have to give the exact definition of the terms that they ask. Okay, for example, in this question, they ask what is the meaning of isotope. So, you are actually referring to the definition of the isotope. So, what is isotope? Isotope is the atoms of the same element that have same number of proton. So, they will see the, the definition. 
atoms of same number of proton but different number of neutron. Your answer should start with atoms of the same element. This is the exact definition of isotope. So please go through all the definition that you already learned during your form 4 and also form 5 if you are form 5 and the answer for the definition question must be the exact definition that you learn okay okay there is a uh, several question that they will ask you about um, comparison explanation okay and you have to uh, give explanation they usually allocate about three marks on that so make sure you have three points for you to explain so you have to uh, refer the question what the question wants okay how to answer section b and section c first read all question step two outline the important instruction this is very important outline the important instruction use simple sentence and use total marks given to as a guide to write your answer okay one mark is given for one point so avoid the writing answer in the form of paragraph and questions related to comparison are encouraged to answer in the form of table or equivalent differences. So you can use table. Okay, use diagrams, table, graph, example equation or show how calculation work to support your answer. This is uh, some of the common key questions. Okay, state, compare, predict, differentiate, name, define. Okay, there is another plot justify sketch calculate determine explain suggest so this is the common key question okay for example if the question asks you name or state the name so you have to give the name not the formula okay bagi nama dia okay bukan formula example name the isotope that is used to treat cancer disease so you have to know the isotope that can treat cancer disease and the name of the isotope. So the answer should be cobalt 60. If you put CO-60, you will not get your marks because it is not a name. It's a formula of the element. Next one is write the formula or chemical formula. If the question asks you to write the formula of the element, ion or compound, Write the formula. Examples, write the formula of the substances. In this case, the substances is water. So, the formula for water is H2O. If you put water, then you will not get your mark. You must memorize all the formula of cation and anion. So, this is one of the handout that I give you. Please refer to that. Okay, and memorize the cation. What does it mean by cation? It is a positive ion. The anion is the negative ion. Make sure you understand that if the copper is in atom state, so the formula will be Cu only. Eh? Cu sahaja. Tak ada charge, apa-apa tak ada dekat formula tu. If the copper exists as copper 2 ion, what does it mean by 2? Two? 2 is the oxidation number or the charge of the ion. So, your formula will have a charge at the end of the formula. Okay, so it is different. Copper is an atom. Copper 2 plus ion is an ion. So, the formula also will have uh, slightly different changes. Uh, for chlorine, if you have I and E at the end of the name of the element for group 17, so that is molecule it is a diatomic molecule so the formula will have two at the end of the formula but if you have chloride ion ide it means it exists as an ion so you will have negative charge at the end of the formula so you must understand that there is a light different when the name change now we go through the uh, confusing question Okay, that always uh, makes students confused. The first one is physical state. Okay, what is physical state? A physical state is the physical state of an element, a compound in room temperature. Okay, usually it is in the room temperature. Okay, what is room temperature? Room temperature is the temperature between 27 degrees Celsius to 30 
degree Celsius in Malaysia. If you in different countries, so your room temperature might be slightly different. So, uh, the first question asks about physical state. The second question about symbol of the aluminium. So, you know that aluminium is a metal. So, the symbol is A, L, A capital letter. L is small letter. But what is the physical state of aluminium at room temperature? So, your answer should be consists of solid. It's either solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, that is your physical state. If the question asks about type of particle, then your answer should be atom, ion, or molecule. So, in this case, the question one, the physical state. So, what is physical state for aluminium at room temperature? Aluminium is an atom, exists as solid at room temperature. So, the answer is solid. Okay, so the answer will be solid. Okay, if the question asks about the type of particles, then your answer should be atom. Because aluminium is an atom at room temperature. It can also form ion if it react to another non-metal element. But in this case, it is an atom. Okay, please remember type of particle. Remember Zaim. Zara is atom, ion or molecule. How can we differentiate atom, ion or molecule? So this is... Uh, one of the way for us to remember atom usually come from uh, group 18 or transition element or any metal uh, they have only one name and usually the name will end with letter m example lithium and with m sodium and with m okay potassium m magnesium m aluminium m so usually all metal the name will end with m Except, okay, zinc, because this is a transition element, and copper. Okay, copper and zinc, name does not end with M. Okay, how do you know metal? Metal is group 1, group 2, group 13, and transition element. So, let's say this is group 1. So, the metal will be lithium, sodium, and potassium. Group 2 will be beryllium magnesium and calcium okay group 13 usually we talk about aluminium okay transition element is a common the common transition element will be zinc lead copper silver aurum okay so you need to know several transition element and group 18 all the element in group 18 helium argon neon and so on Okay, for molecule, there is two type of molecule. The first one is the diatomic molecule. Okay, what is diatomic molecule? That is the element that exists as diatomic in the room temperature. So you can memorize hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine, and bromine. So have no fear of ice cold brain. For diatomic molecule, you just memorize that in group 17, you have fluorine. Chlorine, bromine, iodine. Okay, for group 16, you have oxygen. For group 15, you have nitrogen. Okay, for group 14, 14 carbon. Carbon is semi metal, so it's usually does not exist as diatomic molecule. So only group 15, 16, 17 that exists as diatomic molecule. And then the name of the compound usually N with N, the letter N or NE. For example, hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen does not have any group. Okay, oxygen, nitrogen. Okay, all N. Okay, N with N. And chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine. N with NE. Okay, okay except uh, you have water and ammonia which is not. Uh, the latter is not ending with N. Okay, there is another type of molecule that have two names. This is usually a compound. For example, you have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, okay, it ends with N and DE. How to know? Okay, it is a combination of non-metal element and non-metal element. So, carbon is a non-metal. 
Carbon is a non-metal element. Oxygen also a non-metal element. So carbon dioxide is a molecule. Okay, hydrogen chloride also a non-metal and non-metal element. So it is molecule. If you want to see or you want to differentiate an ion, make sure the first name of the compound is made up of metal. Okay, they must be metal plus non-metal. So, for example, if you have potassium chloride, potassium is a metal, chloride is a non-metal. So, metal plus non-metal is ionic compound. Okay, example, another example is lithium sulfate. Lithium, lithium is metal, sulfate is a non-metal um, complex ion. So, it is an ion. Okay, usually just refer to the first name. If it consists of a metal, automatically we will know that that is an ionic compound. Okay, another uh, confusing question related to the terms used is uh, subatomic particle. What is subatomic particle? Subatomic particles is referring to the particles inside an atom. So the answer should be either proton electron and neutron if the question asks you what is the subatomic particle in the nucleus so your answer should be either proton or nucleus this one sorry neutron okay this one exists inside the nucleus okay remember sapen subatomic proton electron or neutron okay in uh, electron exists in the shells of electron let's see an example of another confusing question okay this is lithium potassium and uh, sodium metal it is stored in the paraffin oil okay so the question is state one physical properties of potassium element so what is potassium potassium is group one metal okay group one Okay, but now the question asks about the physical properties, not physical state. So, what is the physical properties of potassium for group 1 element? So, you have to know what is physical properties. Okay, what is the difference between physical state and physical properties? Physical state is the state of the particles, uh, the state of the element, the compound in room temperature. So, the answer will be solid liquid or gas but physical properties is the properties of the element or the compound so your answer should be related to the melting and boiling point solubility in water and organic solvent okay the density of the compound or the element and the conductivity of the element or compound towards electricity or heat so usually we will focus more on melting and boiling point. So in this case, this is metal group 1. So the physical properties of metal group 1, they have a low melting and boiling point. So that can be your answer. Okay, another answer that can be accepted will be the density of metal group 1 is very low. Okay, that's why they will uh, float on the surface of water. They also conduct electricity. Uh, but we cannot talk about the solubility in water because they will react towards water. Okay? So you have to know uh, several physical properties of several compound or element that we learn in your Form 4 syllabus and Form 5 syllabus. Okay, what is the difference between physical properties and chemical properties of a substance? If I talk about physical properties, I am referring to the melting point and boiling point of the substance. The solubility in the water, the density and the conductivity. But if I talk about the chemical properties, your answer should be react with what? To produce what? Okay, for example, if we talk about the chemical properties of potassium just now, so your answer should be react with, let's say, water to produce. To produce what? To produce alkaline solution and hydrogen gas okay so that is 
the chemical properties of potassium. So the difference is physical properties, melting and boiling point, solubility, density, conductivity. Chemical properties react with white to produce white. The same as the question, if the question asks you about what is the chemical properties of acid, so you can answer acid react with metal to produce salt and hydrogen gas. So that is the chemical properties of acid, how they react towards something and what product that they bring out from the reaction. If the question asks you to state, no need to explain your answer. Okay, macam tadi, ni soalan yang tadi tu. Okay, state three subatomic particles of an atom. So, your answer should be proton, neutron and electron. No need to explain your answer. Just state. Okay. Okay, draw electron arrangement. Okay, electron arrangement. You have three types of electron arrangement. You have atom electron arrangement, atomic structure and compound electron arrangement. So, what is the difference? Okay, atomic structure. You have the proton and neutron in the center of the atom okay in the nucleus you put what ataupun how many proton and how many neutron if you are asked to draw the electron arrangement you just put the formula of the compound and draw the electron arrangement as usual so in this case we will use the proton number and the electron arrangement for the calcium is 2.8.8.2 so, if you are given a proton number, you are given the standard representation, use the proton number to draw the electron arrangement of the atom. Okay, so this is atomic structure on the left and the electron arrangement on the right. Okay, if you are asked to draw a compound electron arrangement, so in our syllabus, we have two types of compound which is ionic compound and covalent compound ionic compound is the one with charge okay and it must consist of metal for example this is magnesium oxide so magnesium is metal so oxygen is a non-metal element so plus non-metal so di mesti ada satu metal satu lagi tu bukan metal okay but if you have covalent compound you will see that both of the element is a non-metal element. For example, in this case, carbon is a non-metal. Okay, it will react also with oxygen and produce molecule. Okay, so if you have a compound of the electron arrangement of a metal, so they will form ionic compound. If you don't have any metal in the electron arrangement of the information that they give you, so most probably they are a covalent compound and the sharing of covalent compound you can draw it in the center of the uh, molecule okay the image area kita panggil dia punya intersection lah kita akan lukis dekat tengah-tengah if you have an ionic compound you must write the charge at the per right side of the electron arrangement of the ion let's see uh, one of examples for the formation of the ionic or covalent compound. So in this case, the question say that slate lime which is used to treat acidic soil is an ionic compound. So already mentioned that that form from X and oxygen element. So draw the electron arrangement of slate lime. Slate lime is actually the compound that formed during the reaction. So how to draw the electron arrangement first? I write the electron arrangement of the compound 2.8.8.2 and then oxygen oxygen 2.6 so this is an ionic compound how do i know because you have two at the end of the electron arrangement if you have one two or three means it is an ionic compound because it is a metal metal group one metal group two or metal group 13 if you have 4, 5, 6, 7, at the end of the electron arrangement means they, they are non-metal element. So, you need to draw the covalent compound. Okay, so in this case, this is an ionic compound. So, just draw X, K2, K8, the second shell, and then the third shell, also 8. And put the bracket and the charge of the ion. 
So, two positive because these two electron will be given to oxygen. So, this is actually will transfer towards the non-metal atom. So, the oxygen in this case is the non-metal atom. So, you'll have the electron arrangement of 2.8. So, the two electron is actually given by the X. Okay, so the charge will be 2 negative. Okay, so that is your 2 marks. Okay, next. Drawing the electron arrangement of particle in solid, liquid and gas. Okay, make sure you draw at least 3 layers of particles closely packed in orderly manners. At least 9 atom. Okay, do not draw half of the atom. This is wrong. Okay, do not draw intersect atom. So, this is actually also wrong. Okay, the particles must not overlap each other so this is an example of uh, the mistake that students usually do okay if you are drawing liquid or gas so liquid is the particles that are closely packed but not in orderly manner for gas it will be very far apart from each other so no touching between the atom but liquid you have to touch between the atom okay so, is the difference between solid and liquid is it's not in orderly manner. Okay, another question that usually uh, being confused by the student is the arrangement, the movement of the particles. So, if you are asked about the arrangement, so your answer should be closely packed in orderly arrangement for solid. If you are asked about liquid, so the answer should be closely packed in orderly arrangement. The difference is the orderly arrangement. For gas, is widely separated. If you are asked about the movement, so please differentiate between arrangement and movement. Movement, your answer should be vibrate and rotate at fixed position. Okay, it's how the particles move. Uh, for liquid, particles vibrate, rotate and move throughout the liquid. For gas, vibrate, rotate and move freely. So, it's a movement of the particles. The arrangement is how the particles are arranged. So, please differentiate the two terms. Eh? Arrangement, arrangement, movement, movement. Okay, forces of attraction for solid very strong. Okay, liquid strong, gas very weak. Okay, energy content for solid is very low. Because it cannot move. So, the kinetic energy very low. Okay, liquid moderate, gas very high. If you are asked to draw a diagram, okay, make sure that your diagram are functioning, being labeled. Okay, if you use a solution, any solution, use dash line. What does it mean by dash line? This is the dash line. Lah. Dash line ni mesti dia, bentuk dia. Okay, dash Dash, dash, dash. Itu maksudnya ni adalah solution. Kalau dia bukan solution, if the uh, compound that you use exists as, uh, let's say, solid or uh, liquid, so you don't have to draw the dash line. Uh, liquid, kita shade. Okay, example, uh, let's say you use lead bromide, lead to bromide. When you heat, it will turn into liquid so you just shade the compound if the experiment involve heating draw an arrow and label heat below the arrow okay, this one eh? you don't need to draw the bunsen burner no need to draw bunsen burner okay another important parts in a diagram is if you have a uh, stopper make sure your stopper half is inside the test tube another half is outside the test tube look at how the diagram look like and make sure you draw it clearly okay use ruler please use ruler if you are drawing test tube beaker and so on okay this is another examples of experiment in form 4 syllabus where you have the reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid so this gas that produced during this reaction is the hydrogen gas okay so this gas is colorless gas so what happened is you want the gas to travel throughout the delivery tube so your test tube okay and your delivery tube the solution must not touch each other 
Okay, it must be on the upper side of the solution. But after the reaction, you want the hydrogen to go through the solution here to neutralize the gas. So it will be inside the solution. So you must differentiate what is the reason of you to put the delivery tube in the setup. And usually, uh, kita tak lukis lah. Bunsen burner, you just put arrow and label. Clamp tu, tak payah lukis dia punya retort stand. Just lukis dia punya, just draw dia punya clamp sahaja. Uh, explanation, question. If you are asked to give reason to explain a fact, statement or observation, Okay, let's say this is a question related to diagram that I just give you. Okay, cadangkan logam X and logam Y, suggest metal X and metal Y. So, this is the experiment. So, you have to know to determine the empirical formula of metal oxide. You have two different experiments. The first experiment are using for your syllabus using magnesium. The second experiment, okay, metal oxide Y, this is for copper. So, what is the difference between these two experiments? The first experiment is for reactive metal. So, this one is for reactive metal. And the reaction for this experiment is towards oxygen. Okay, you react magnesium towards oxygen and the product is magnesium oxide. But the second experiment is for less reactive metal. So, for less reactive metal... Uh, you use the second method because in this reaction, the hydrogen will be the one that react with the metal oxide and remove the oxygen from the compound. So, you are using the copper oxide. For the first experiment, you are using the metal. The second experiment, you are using the compound of copper oxide. So, this reaction will produce you copper and water, the byproduct. Okay, so uh, please look at the experiment, both experiments. And how to uh, write the calculation for both experiments. So, this one very important. Okay, they always ask about either one. Neither one sama ada X ataupun Y. Okay, so in this question, they ask you suggest metal X and metal Y. So, metal X is magnesium. And X explain why metal was chosen. Okay, magnesium is more reactive towards oxygen. That's why magnesium is chosen by using a setup number one because magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen magnesium cannot use method number two okay but if you have copper copper is less reactive than hydrogen so copper is unreactive in metal so they will use setup number two so it will depend on question yang ditanya lah so kalau you ditanya kenapa you choose method one because magnesium is Reactive toward oxygen. Kenapa magnesium does not use uh, method number two? Because magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen. Hydrogen cannot remove oxygen from magnesium oxide. It's actually related to the reactivity series. Okay, pattern and comparison type question. So this is this is also a very typical question in structured section A. So what is pattern question? Pattern question, you will see the word use is going across the period. Going across the period, going down the group, going down the group. This is for um, chapter 4, periodic table. Or you can also find the word use as number of carbon atom per molecule increase. This one is 445. So the word use will be atomic size increase, decreases. Okay, the word use is increases, decreases, reactivity increases, decreases. This is a pattern question. Okay, if you are given a two uh, element, two compound, two situation and asked to compare, so the word use will be bigger, smaller. For example, atom A is bigger than atom B. Okay, and the reactivity will become more reactive, less reactive. The word use, stronger, larger, smaller. That is the word that used for comparison question. Or if it involves a reaction, you can also say A react, B does not react. Or uh, in the rate of reaction, you can say rate of reaction in experiment 1 is higher than experiment 2. That is also a comparison question. 
Okay, let me give you an example. This is trial Terengganu. Okay, they give you table on the electron arrangement of period 3. The question asks what is the meaning of period. Period is the horizontal row in the periodic table and then they ask you to explain why all elements in table 6 are located in the same period okay why same period because all of the atoms have same number of shells occupied by electron which is 3 okay and then they ask you about referring to the change in atomic radius explain why the electronegativity increases when across the period from left to right so the word increases when across so it is a pattern question so how to answer this pattern question okay so this is the answer i already give you in the slide so um the first point that you have to mention is about the size of the atomic radius okay the size of the atomic radius decrease look at the word use decrease menurun mengecil okay become smaller also correct okay and then we talk about the nucleus force of attraction of atom towards electron is come stronger so stronger ni maksudnya Dia semakin kuat. The strength of the nucleus of atom to attract electron becomes stronger. So, the ability of the nucleus to attract electron towards the atom will become stronger. So, the atomic radius will decrease. So, that is a pattern question. Eh? Pattern question ni, kita nak tengok dia punya perubahan. Okay, perubahan apabila merentasi kala. Going across the period. Or going down the group. Uh, another question. For example, this is an... Okay, ignore this. Okay, this is a question related to uh, also periodic table. But now, the question asks you about comparison. Okay, it says that element J and K are in the same group but have different reactivity. So, this is where J and K is in group 1. Okay, when we act towards oxygen, explain why there is a difference in reactivity towards oxygen between the two elements. Okay, now the first question that I give you is a pattern question. It means you have to use the word increase, decrease. But for this question, it is a comparison question. So if the question is a comparison question, okay, it must be compact. They must see the Beza kan? Okay. Example, you can say atom K is more reactive. More reactive. Lebih reactive. Eh? Then atom J because atom K have more shells occupied by electron compared to atom J. Use word atom. Eh? Atom. Wajib. So, you can say K have bigger atomic size compared to J. Also can. Okay. And then you will say about Forces of attraction between nucleus and valence electron in atom K is weaker. Why? Because it's going down the group. Okay, the size become bigger. The forces of attraction become weaker. So, the forces of attraction of atom K is weaker compared to atom J. So, atom K can release valence electron faster than atom J. So, it's a comparison between J and K. Okay, we don't use the word increase, decrease anymore. So, if the question is comparison question, please use the word faster, okay, weaker, stronger as your answer in the sentence. Okay, so ni yang bahasa Melayu, so skip je. Okay, this is one of question related to the rate of reaction. Let's read the question together. A student carried out two sets of experiment to study the rate of of solubility between zinc and two type of acid x and y the data of the experiment are shown in table 10 so your manipulated variable in this case is two types of acid so this is your manipulated variable two types of acid okay your constant variable will be zinc because zinc does not change between set 1 and set 2 Okay, so your reactant is 3.25 gram of zinc powder and your acid is 1.0 mole per decimeter cube. So zinc powder will dissolve completely in acid X in 1 minute. 
but uh, zinc powder will dissolve completely in acid Y in 2 minutes. So, set number 1, have higher rate of reaction. And you can also see the product. This is zinc sulfate. This is zinc chlorida, zinc chloride. So, means... This is coming from the sulfuric acid, okay, acid sulfuric. Okay, this is coming from hydrochloric acid. That's why your product will be zinc chloride. So, you know the acid that used in the reaction by product formed during the reaction. Okay, based on table 10, okay, by referring to co a collision theory, explain why there is different in the rate of reaction in set 1 and set 2. So, if you look at the question, okay, they ask you to compare or uh, explain the difference. Okay, so your answer must have a comparison word such as higher, lower, bigger, smaller, stronger or weaker. Okay, use that word to differentiate between set 1 and set 2. Okay, how to compare the rate of reaction? For graph, rate of reaction, there is two things that you have to refer. Okay, the first one is the gradient of the graph. Okay, how do you know a gradient of the graph? This is how steep the gradient produced during the reaction. So, for this experiment, the experiment in set 1 have higher rate of reaction because the reaction stopped in 1 minute. So, let's say this is 1 minute. 1 minute equals to 60 second. Okay. 1 minute 60 second. Okay. But the experiment 2 finish in 2 minute. So, 2 minute means 120 second. So, the faster the reaction finish means you have a higher rate of reaction. And if you look at the slope, the gradient of the graph, this graph is steeper. Dia lebih curam eh. Bila lebih curam, bila lebih steep means dia ada higher rate of reaction. Rate of reaction eh. ROR. So, kalau dia less steep, so this one will have low rate of reaction. Lower lah rate of reaction. Okay, that is the first part that you have to compare between experiment 1 and experiment 2. The second one, for this experiment, Okay, they have different type of acid, which is the first one is sulfuric acid, which is more uh, diprotic acid. The second one is monoprotic acid. So, in this experiment, this is only an example. Okay, the experiment graph will be looking like this. For the question, it will be looking like this. So, this is set 1. So, this will be set 2. Okay, why for this experiment... They have a different height of graph. Okay, so let's say this is the volume of hydrogen gas. And this is the time. So what is the difference between the first graph and the second graph? If the height of the graph, if you look at the height of the graph, they have different height means they have different maximum product. Maximum product means experiment one have more product compared to experiment two but in this experiment in the question they will have the same amount of product because the limiting reagent is zinc so zinc is a limiting reagent for this experiment okay so in this case the graph will have same height set one and set two will have same height because your product that produced during the reaction is the same. But you will have different rate of reaction because set 1 and set 2 have different time in 1 minute or 60 second. The second, the second set is 2 minute which is 120 second. If you want to compare the rate of reaction, refer to the gradient of the experiment. If you want to compare the product, refer to the height of the graph. Okay, dia punya ketinggian graph tu. So, in this case, you can say that 
the rate of reaction in set 1 is higher than set 2. Look at the word higher there. And then you can say the sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. So what does it mean by diprotic? Means it will ionize to form two mole of hydrogen ion. Okay, hydro then hydrochloric acid is a monoprotic acid. Okay, the concentration of hydrogen ion in an acid Y is twice than an acid X. So it's a comparison. Eh? The number of hydrogen ion per unit volume in set 1 is higher than set 2. That is the keyword of collision theory. Okay, the frequency of collision between zinc atom and hydrogen ion in set 1 is higher than set 2. Lastly, the frequency of effective collision between zinc atom and hydrogen ion in set 1 is higher than set 2. So, you're comparing the uh, set 1 and set 2 rate of reaction by referring to the manipulated variable, the type of acid used, which is diprotic and monoprotic acid. Please study back okay, the factors that affect the rate of reaction based on collision theory. If we are talking about the size of reactant, so we are referring to the total surface area exposed to collision is larger or smaller. If we are talking about the concentration of the reactant, we are talking about the total number of particles in a unit volume, whether it is more, higher, lower per unit volume, eh? number of particles per unit volume. If we are talking about temperature of the reaction mixture, so we are talking about the kinetic energy of the reacting particles. If we are talking about catalyst, we are actually referring to the lower activation energy caused by the catalyst. Okay, so this is how you explain. In the experiment just now, we are actually referring to the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Okay, because diprotic acid will contain more hydrogen ion compared to the monoprotic acid. Then, we will talk about the frequency of collision between the particles, frequency of collision between the particles, and then frequency of effective collision between the particles, and last one, the rate of reaction, whether the rate of reaction will increase or decrease. Okay, the difference between three uh, factors yang pertama dengan catalyst is catalyst, dia takkan ubah, it will not affect the frequency of collision between the particles. That's why you see the arrow here, it directly go through the frequency of effective collision because catalyst does not affect the frequency of collision between the particles. It lower down the activation energy of the particles. So, it actually does not affect the frequency of collision between the particles. It only affect the frequency of effective collision. What is the difference between frequency of collision and frequency of effective collision? Okay, frequency of collision ni, dia punya pelanggaran lah. How many times they collide with each other in one second. But frequency of effective collision, referring to the effective collision that can produce the product. The produce the product, we call it effective. If they collide, if the particles collide but does not produce product, we say it that is not effective. Okay, so lower down the activation energy will cause the particles to collide in effective way. Okay, it will produce product faster compared to non-catalyst reaction. Okay, next one is writing chemical equation. So we have five types of writing equation. You have chemical equation, ionic equation, half equation, ionization equation and thermochemical equation. Okay, chemical equation is a very uh, direct equation. Ionic equation is where you can see the charge of the ion and the atom changes. Okay, this is the ionic equation. Half equation is when you see the electron in the equation. Okay, whether the atom release electron or the atom accepting the electron, that is half equation. Okay, the ionization equation for the solution when the solute is added in water and turned into solution, sorry. Okay, 
So let's say you have a zinc nitrate. So when zinc nitrate is added in water, so it will ionize to form zinc 2 plus ion and nitrate ion. Okay, thermochemical equation only form 5 million this. This is a thermochemical equation is uh, having addition of delta H at the end of the chemical equation. Okay, uh, let's see an example. Okay, this question, uh, the question say that based on figure 12, give, uh, write the chemical equation for the reaction that occurs between hydrochloric acid and zinc and then calculate the mass of zinc required in the reaction to produce 100 centimeter cube of gas to be used in the reaction to determine the empirical formula of metal oxide Y. Okay, so what you need to do is when you get this kind of question, make sure you uh, differentiate the marks between the chemical equation and the calculation so in this case chemical equation you have p1 and p2 which is 0.1 and 0.2 and then the calculation you have three marks here p3 p4 and p5 so you have to write down the chemical equation for first for this reaction okay so this reaction is between zinc so that zinc is atom so no charge there react with hydrochloric acid so hcl produce zinc chloride the product and also hydrogen gas so salt and hydrogen gas and then you balance the chemical equation and you can also get the qualitative and quantitative analysis of the chemical equation what is qualitative analysis qualitative analysis is when you say zinc and hydrochloric acid is the reactant so this is your reactant okay zinc chloride and the hydrogen is the product so that is what we call as qualitative we can also say that zinc exists as atom so this is atom hydrochloric acid exists as aqueous zinc chloride also aqueous okay aq also exists as aq hydrogen gas exists as gas that is also qualitative analysis quantitative analysis is when we say one mole of zinc react with two mole of hydrochloric acid to produce one mole of zinc chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas so it's actually the comparison of number of mole between the reactant and the product okay then you have to calculate okay to calculate the reaction you must show the start of your calculation and also give the final answer with the correct unit as i make sure you already um master the calculation formula here okay you can refer to any modules okay any exercise book that you have so this reaction if you look at the reaction just now, so calculate the zinc required in the reaction to produce 100 cm3 of gas to be used in the reaction to determine the empirical formula of metal oxide Y. So in this reaction, you have to calculate the mass of zinc required. So the step is, first, you differentiate the information and the question that they ask. So in this case, they asking they are asking about zinc. So this is your question, mass of zinc, and they give you the volume of hydrogen gas. So this is the volume of hydrogen gas, hundred centimeter cube. So now you have to calculate the mass of zinc. So as usual, okay, you have one hundred centimeter cube of gas. So what you have to do is you calculate the number of mole okay, of the 100 centimeter cube of gas, change it to decimeter cube, so convert the centimeter cube to decimeter cube, so it will be 0 0.1 decimeter cube. How to convert? Uh, divide by 1000. Okay, now you have the 0 0.1 decimeter cube. So number of mole is 0 0.1 divided with molar volume. So molar volume given in the question, 24. So 0 0.1 divided 24. So you get 0 0.0042 mole. Okay, after that, you will go to the ratio. Ratio of the info and the question asked. 
So from the chemical equation, we can say that one mole of hydrogen produced by one mole of zinc. So if I have 0 0.0042 mole of hydrogen, so I will also produce 0 0.0042 mole of zinc. Okay, so that is your number of a mole of zinc. The ratio is 1 to 1. And the last part is your answer. So from the equation, you have 0 0.0042 mole of zinc. So the question asks you to calculate the mass. So for calculation of mass is equal to number of mole 0 0.0042 times with the molar mass of zinc which is 65. Okay, so you will get 0 0.273 gram. Okay, so that is your mass of zinc required during the experiment so in this reaction if you look at the calculation okay the p3 is for number of mole so this is your mark your third mark okay the p4 is the ratio so make sure you write down the ratio for the calculation and your p5 is your final answer with the correct si unit so when you do this calculation just divide your paper into three areas so that you can uh, easily differentiate the calculation okay this is another calculation that uh, can came up this is the determination of the empirical formula of a compound or molecular formula of a compound um, this is the following information on the composition of hydrocarbon p which can be used to determine the molecular formula for form 4, you have not learned about hydrocarbon, but hydrocarbon means they have hydrogen and carbon in a compound. So hydrogen is the, the simplification of the hydro there. Carbon is carbon. So carbon and hydrogen make a compound called hydrocarbon. Okay, so in this compound, you have 85.70% of carbon and 14.30% of hydrogen. So if you are given in a percentage value of an element, so you just convert the percentage to mass. Means if you have 85.70% of carbon, just convert the 85.70 to the mass of the element. Okay, just put it in gram because we make an assumption that the total mass of the compound is 100 gram. So, 14.30 is for hydrogen. Okay, after that, you must calculate the number of mole for carbon and hydrogen. So, the formula is the same formula. If you are given a mass, you want to calculate number of mole. So, you divide mass with the relative atomic mass or molar mass of the element. So, 85.70 divided by 12. So, 14.30 divided by 1. So, hydrogen, uh, the relative atomic mass is 1. Carbon, the relative atomic mass is 12. When you get the number of mole for each element, 7.14. So, this is 14.30. Okay, so you will have two number of mole there. 7.14 is smaller than 14.30 so your simplest ratio or your ratio must be referring to the number of mole which is smaller than the others okay so in this case you just divide 7.14 with 7.14 so you get 1 14.30 you divide by 7.14 so you get 2 almost 2 or 2 lah okay so the ratio is 1 to 2. So the empirical formula for this compound is C1 hydrogen 2. So that is your empirical formula for hydrocarbon P. So based on the information, empirical formula of hydrocarbon P is C1H2. It's the simplest whole number ratio of the compound. So now the question already give you the relative molecular mass. Molecular mass of the compound which is 56 so the calculation will be the 
relative molecular mass for the molecular formula is equal to the total number of the relative molecular mass for the empirical formula so relative molecular mass for the empirical formula n times with n okay so given the relative molecular formula is 56 so n times carbon 12 plus 2 times 1 okay so that is the relative atomic mass for hydrogen so total up to 14 okay continue here so your n okay is 14n equals to 56 so n will be 56 divided by 14 okay so 56 divided by 14 so you will get 4 so your n is equals to 4 so your molecular formula for this compound okay so n is equals to 4 so your molecular formula is equal to c1 h2 your n is equals to 4 so the molecular formula will be c4 h8 so that is your molecular formula so you just multiply 4 with the number inside the empirical formula so that is your molecular formula so that is how you determine your empirical and molecular formula molecular formula must be referring to the relative molecular mass of the compound uh, next one is describe an experiment to describe an experiment no marks will be given for diagram except if the question purposely asks for the diagram diagram can help student write the step in the procedure but there is no specific marks for diagram so you need the apparatus and material procedure observation examples tabulation data depends on the question if the question asks you for the data equation calculation or any related uh, information for the experiment for this example this is experiment showing the uh, different powder which is powder a and b so the experiment is to different to study the difference in the physical properties okay remember what is physical properties melting and boiling point okay the conductivity the solubility and also density so in this case they are actually talking about the conductivity of powder A and powder B. So, include observation and conclusion for the experiment. So, you are given the crucible, pipe clay triangle, spatula, Bunsen burner, connecting wires with crocodile clip, tripod stand, batteries, two electrode and a bulb. Okay, so how to write a procedure? Remember A, B, C. Arahan, bahan, cara. Okay, so this is the diagram to help you to write the procedure. The procedure will start with arahan. Okay, what is the arahan? Fill. The word is fill. Okay, fill what? Okay, three spatula of powder A into a crucible. So, bahan dia adalah powder A. Okay, the materials. And how? Cara dia adalah into the crucible. And then insert two carbon electrodes. So this is your carbon electrode. Into powder A and connect to batteries and bulk with connecting wires. Okay, third, record the observation of whether the bulbs lights up or not. Because we are comparing the conductivity. If the bulbs light up means the powder can conduct electricity means the powder is an ionic compound ionic compound can conduct electricity in molten and aqueous state but covalent compound cannot conduct electricity at any state so heat the powder a strongly record the observation of whether the box light up or not and then repeat so please remember every experiment you must repeat using powder b to replace powder a because we have the manipulated variable in this case is two different powder okay so the observation okay you can suggest the observation 
for example, you can say powder A, okay, in physical state of solid, does not light up, but in molten, it light up. Mean, powder A is an ionic compound. So, this is for ionic compound. Uh, for powder B, in solid state, it does not light up. In molten, also does not light up. So, means this is a covalent compound. The properties of a covalent compound. So, what can you say is powder A is an ionic compound while powder B is a covalent compound. You can uh, use powder A as covalent, powder B is ionic because they did not state that any properties of A and B uh, throughout the experiment. So, they just um, make an assumption of powder A is ionic compound. Okay. To describe an experiment, it is very good for you to state the physical state of the substance used. For example, just now we use powder. So, you mentioned about powder, powder A, powder B. Okay, If it exists as a solution, mention the solution. Okay, strip. Okay, this is strip. This one. Okay, ribbon. This is usually used for magnesium, electrode, carbon, rod. Okay, magnesium as in powdered form. So, you use the word powder okay so is the difference between powder granule and chips so chips is bigger than granule granule is bigger than powder and you must understand that if you add the solute into a solvent usually solvent is water so it will create a solution so the solution is when there is water in the substance okay if there is no water you heat the substance and it melts we call it as a liquid okay this is another uh, tips for describing an experiment state the volume and concentration of the solution eh? okay how to state the volume and concentration or the mass of solid use if the solution have a molarity use molarity between 0 0.5 to 2 mole per decimeter cube okay uh, volume 20 to 100 depends on the beaker or test tube that you are using test tube 2 to 5 okay because test tube is smaller tabung dide ataupun boiling tube 2 to 10 okay beaker 20 to 100 centimeter cube if you are using 250 you can uh, use up to 250 centimeter cube Mass usually we use 0 0.5 to 5 gram. Use action words such as add, mix, pour, stir, filter, heat, and etc. Uh, suit your experiment with the action word. Okay, observation. Observation must state the color, initial color before the experiment and the final color. Let's say you have copper carbonate. When we heat copper carbonate, the color will change from green to black. So, mention about the color changes from what color to what color. Okay, color before and color after. Okay, okay. observation is what you observe physically. What you observe physically. Okay, for example, colorless gas bubble release. That is observation. Okay, copper electrode becomes thinner, becomes thicker. Okay, that is observation. Yellow precipitate form, the color of the precipitate. Yellow, white, blue. So, you have to mention about the color of the precipitate if the precipitate form. And then, describing chemical tests. So, you have three types of chemical tests, which is test for gas, test for cation, and test for an ion. These two tests is only for solution. Okay, the marks will be the first one for the procedure and correct reagent. Okay, the second mark will be for observation and the third one usually is for the conclusion. Okay, how many tests for gas that you have? Okay, actually there's a lot but the one that you need to focus on is oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen. This is common gas that you have to know. Okay, so if you look at this suggestion of my answer here, when you are using glowing wooden splinter and the glowing wooden splinter lights up, the oxygen gas is released. So this is test for oxygen. Okay, if you are using hydrogen or you want to confirm hydrogen, so we use the lighted wooden splinter. So for hydrogen, use lighted. 
wooden splinter so it will produce pop sound this one i think most of you know okay produce pop sound if you want to test carbon dioxide you will use lime water so the lime water will turn cloudy so this one you must know compulsory for you to know other than that okay you just need to know the properties of the gas okay nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas okay half color other than that all of them does not have color sulfur dioxide hydrogen chloride chlorine is acidic so this three gas is acidic so it will usually use the damp blue litmus paper that will change to red ammonia is alkali so ammonia will change a uh, red litmus paper to blue if you are asked to plot a graph make sure you label both axes with correct units okay let's say you are using a uh, volume of carbon dioxide versus time so volume of carbon dioxide the unit must be shown there centimeter cube per second uh, sorry centimeter cube and then time is second okay use suitable and uniform scale the uniform scale means the scale that you are using must be same let's say you have 10 it will increase to 20 and then to 30 okay that's not uh don't change the scale it means 10 and then suddenly 30 okay the you the scale must be uniform okay and then the size of the graph must be at least three to four of the size of the graph paper plot all the points correctly and draw a smooth curve with the correct shape okay this one is specifically for rate of reaction okay it depends on the experiment okay uh next one for sketch or draw to sketch the graph you don't need the plotting uh, x mark you just label both axes with correct units axis means the y axis and the x axis okay make sure you label that that is one mark draw the smooth curve with the correct shape this is for the rate of reaction or the melting and boiling point of naphthalene okay label boiling point and melting point for experiment accordingly if needed lah. okay so this is the melting point or boiling point you just uh, give a dot dotted line and then label the melting and boiling point for uh, melting and boiling point for naphthalene experiment and if you have two or more different experiment label the graph according to the experiment means experiment one which one which one is experiment one which one is experiment two and so on okay okay uh compare and contrast okay uh sometimes they ask you to list the similarities and differences of uh, two condition two terms two phenomena so you can use table for example if the question asks compare the ionic bond and covalent bond you can use the similarities of uh, the the character or the phenomena or the difference between the phenomena for example for ionic and covalent bond okay the formation is by transferring of electron covalent is by sharing of electron forces of attraction have electrostatic forces of attraction between the ions okay but covalent bond have weak van der waal forces between the molecule so the difference is electrostatic is between the charge of the ion the van der waal is between the molecule different molecule okay uh, the solubility ionic bond soluble in water insoluble in organic solvent covalent bond insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvent so you can use table to differentiate two different phenomena okay predict okay for example you can deduce an answer from the information in the question or own knowledge of from an earlier answer okay for example acetine is an element below iodine in group 17 they already give you some indicator okay below iodine in group 17 based on your knowledge about the properties of chlorine bromine and iodine predict one physical properties of acetine okay so your answer can be acetine is a black solid why black solid because okay going down the group the color of the element will become darker okay and it will also exist as solid at room temperature because fluorine is a gas chlorine is a gas 
bromine is liquid uh, but iodine exists as solid so if the element is below iodine means the element exists as solid at room temperature okay so i think that's all uh, maybe there's actually a lot other than this but i think um, this should be enough for you in the meantime so if you have any question you can ask me uh, later or clarify with me when you see me uh, in class or if you are not my student so you can always email me or uh, comment on the video okay so thank you very much uh, have a pleasant holiday good luck on your uh, exams in tuesday please study as much as you can uh, prepare yourself for the test okay thank you